Hello everyone and welcome once again to Rosham Joe Paints. As always, my name is Joe and today I'm going to be putting together and painting the Primaris Outrider from the Indominus set and painting it in my uh, Fulminators scheme. Um, just a couple little tips and tricks on how to put it together, maybe something that'll help out and then of course I'm going to be creating my own uh, paint scheme since there's nothing to, to go by. So. Uh, as usual, here's the finished product. Uh, hopefully it looks pretty good. Uh, my This version of Joe that you're seeing right now has not seen the finished version, so uh, hopefully he'll enjoy it too. And with that said, let's start. So, as with all of my models, I prefer to paint these in as many sub-assemblies as I can just to get all the little nooks and crannies. Now that makes things like this arm uh, pretty easy, and obviously the head can pop right out of there, and the backpack is also uh, no issue, although I will put the backpack on probably before I glue the guy down. Now, it gets a little tricky from here because the legs and this front uh, armor piece here, as well as the tailpipe, originally comes as just one solid piece and there is um, like two pegs that go in through the bike that way as well as a peg underneath here on the bike and one that joins uh, up against the body itself. So in order to do this um, I was dry fitting it and test fitting it a lot and what I found was that if you test fit it enough um, they just they, they start to break apart. So um, because there's no actual need for it to be joined together uh, at the pedal, I simply cut it apart, shimmed it down, or shaved it down, and now I can pet these, or pet, I can pet lovely little things. Um, I can paint them separately. Uh, same thing for this side, although this one, uh, I think in shipping, one of the pegs broke off of this one, so this one pops off real easy, whereas this guy gives me a little bit more, more trouble. And then with, <laughs> after we put a little bit of primer on here, it's gonna get even more fun. Um, so there won't be a whole lot of dry fitting once the primer goes on. From there, it's pretty simple. You have your, your legs down here is where they, uh, these two pieces join. So I'm going to pop or I'm going to use this to pry against it rather than uh, up top because I don't want to break this portion where the, uh, the tailpipe actually joins up with the foot. So you can see there's that other peg uh, on the torso and there's where the one joins. Now we'll get this guy off as well. And there we go. So there you are. Oh, and see, that's as easy as the torso comes out right there. He's just slotted in here. Uh, now, the one, hard you have, well, one part you have to watch out for is his arm needs to basically, there's no, there's no joint here. It's just free floating. So what I'm going to do, um, and probably not while I'm recording because I want a little, at least a little bit of concentration is, I might cut this peg off altogether because you see there's an inset on the, um, the handlebar. So that will still... When it, when it gets, when it goes flush, we'll still go down uh, and push down over the top of that. So I'll cut this peg off and then I'll use this just kind of free floating on here. And I'm probably then going to put this guy into place wherever he goes. Wherever, wow, hang on. Need two hands apparently to get that lined up. There we go. I had him leaning too far back. He's too relaxed. So, anyways, so I will put these two pieces in place, and then I will I will use some plastic glue to glue the arm together um, into a position that I, I like, and then I'll let it dry forever. And then when I take this off, you know, it'll come off as a as basically one solid piece like this. So that'll allow me to still paint everything on both of these pieces, but not have to worry about um, uh, what do you call it? Match. Well, you know, over gluing it later. So uh, this arm comes off as well, but you know, actually, you know what? I just had an idea while we were filming this because I don't plan these out. If you can't tell, I just kind of wing it. What I might do then is get this arm and get this glued into place um, so that it fits the bike right and then take the arm off and then paint that. So then it makes painting the torso even easier. All right, look at this. We're learning stuff as we go. Uh, the torso, I don't think I've glued this together yet, but I'm going to glue this together as one piece since I already, um, I already cut the pieces off the head. Normally when you get the head, there's like a, um, 
a base piece that's wide and flat that holds it from falling out. Um, but if you just cut that off, there you go. You know, it just pops back into place and you can mess with it as many times as you'd like and then just a little bit of super glue when you're, when you're happy with the final. Okay, with all that said, I'm going to now um, probably finish up the arm piece, like I said, and then I will prime it with my McCrag Blue spray. And my plan is to paint it, um, paint the bike first and paint the, the legs and whatnot, paint everything separately, assemble it, and then hopefully it'll gather, hopefully it will go together uh, mostly seamlessly. But I did want to make sure I got into the detail here and into the detail back here. Um, and with the covering, you know, come over the top of it, as well as, you know, the, the legs and whatnot covering the sides, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So that is what we'll do. One final note is this front wheel is floating and, and when you uh, when you get it, don't glue it down simply because when you go to put this in place, you want to make sure that you can put both pegs into the uh, into the holes like that. And if you've glued the wheel too far forward or too far back, then uh, then it won't line up quite right. But you could always just cut that peg off anyway and glue the tire directly to the uh, to the base. All right. All that said, let's get started. So something I did not show you before uh, priming this was uh, the shots of the tailpipes. You don't need to drill these out. I, I just thought it would be a nice little touch, kind of like drilling out your barrels. You can, you don't have to, but eh, I chose to. It was easy enough because they're nice big holes and uh, they came out okay, especially after priming them. They look pretty good. The second thing is the uh, arm. Uh, I did end up gluing just the arm onto the handlebars and, uh, and it's nice solid piece. It all worked out uh, better than expected. So. The final thing I want to show you is uh, now on to the model here. You can see, I think I, I put this in the notes, um, or I'll, I'll put a note in there already, but the you see there's there's gray plastic here. All of that's going to get covered up. All of this is going to get covered up. All of this is going to get covered up. And what that does is when I was priming it, no paint got into the holes. So now it's uh, easier for the parts to slide in and out. I don't get as much binding. And the less binding I get, the more I can play around with it to see how it looks and uh, you know, run less of a risk of actually having one of the pins break off inside. So now uh, what I will start to do is I will start to use my Nuln oil to um, basically run around and fill in all of the um, McCrag blue portions that, uh, first I have to decide what's going to be white and what's not going to be white. But um, once I do that, I will decide what to fill in here. I think most of the bottom here, I'm going to make all of this like a silver um, I'm going to leave this blue here, but I'm going to come back in with uh, lead belcher as well. So that's going to be that. This tank I'm going to make white and these seats I'm going to make white. So realistically, there's not a whole lot of blue on this piece. I guess I could go around the rivets, um, but that's kind of low hanging fruit right there. It's, that's something I could do later on at any point. So let me show you an actual um, piece here. I know I'm going to do a lot of is the... Um, Hang on. I'll touch the model as little as possible. Oh, and you can see right here too, I used a nice piece of stick attack on the uh, the base to hold them while I spray painted. Uh, and that's nice because now it's not uh, it's not all gummed up with primer when I go to do it later. So uh, get off of their head. Get off of there. All right. So we're going to take the uh, Nuln Oil and we are going to put it just like we do with all the primaris uh, ultramarines and uh, fulminators. And we are going to just do more of a targeted uh, shade so that we don't have to uh, repaint the entire model with McCrag blue, blue later. Uh, this is a long step and an annoying step. It's basically, you're almost like you're doing an edge highlighting just, you know, in the crack. So it's a little bit easier and I'm using Nuln Oil straight out of the pot, but that doesn't mean it takes any less finesse or time. So go around the entire model, um, grabbing all of these little lines here like this and then um, filling all these guys in making it uh, giving it a nice little bit of uh, you know a little bit extra depth um, as with my other video and I'm not going to go into a 10 minute explanation this time hopefully it depends on if I forget I did it but again Eschen Gray will be used here with Nolan oil over it so um, that'll be my next step just to get it done hey look at that I did it quickly that time if you have any questions on what the heck I'm talking about, go go watch the uh, Assault Intercessor video and uh, be, um, 
be, uh, I don't know, unhappy or, you know, be warned that uh, <laughs> I basically go into a six minute, I don't even know how long I, I went into it, but a Eschen Gray versus Abaddon Black, where I ended up painting a head of a Turnin model, which by the way is from the Mal Marnia Marnius, Marnius Calgar model. Uh, I didn't want to put it on the base, so for anyone who's keeping score, give yourself a point for that since I was offering the points up. Um, if you got, if you knew it uh, from the last video, I don't actually have a point system, but Hey, if enough people ever want one, I will make one. And I don't know what that's going to look like. So, uh, for now, I know what this is going to look like once it's done, but, uh, you don't. So you'll have to just tune in for the 30 seconds here. And uh, after the transition, you'll see. So I finished the Nuln oil over the McCrag blue. Now it is time to do, um, instead of going back and cleaning up with um, with McCrag blue, any of the uh, portions where I got the Nuln oil too heavy, I'm gonna go and paint all of the base coats that I'm gonna need first uh, and then go and clean it all up at, at one point. So as far as the uh, silver on this piece, there's actually, I don't think any. You could, if you felt like, do these little these little buckles here, but I'm gonna leave those. So. No silver there. All right, that's uh, that's that's that step done. Um, here we get the ears. You know, you get these little these little pieces here, and the the, the tubes here, as well as the back. Uh, wow, I just kind of shot out of there. Uh, as well as the, I like I like making these back circles. Uh, moving on to the arms, I like to do all these little dots in silver feel free to actually use some sort of like color if you want to. Um, I noticed that there's a lot of portions of the screen here. I think I'm going to make like this black here and I'm going to do colors for these buttons. So I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. Um, but I don't think any of this is going to end up being silver. I think it's all going to be end up uh, being black. Um, either way I can come back later. I think maybe, maybe the outside of the handlebars. So, those might get covered up with black later. I don't know. But for the time being, I'm going to use it. All right. Then we get to something some more simple, like simply the, um, this is the like shell ejector casing, I believe. And this is where the shells go in. So those two are going to be black and they're going to be black, which is why I'm painting them silver. They're going to be silver. So that's why I'm painting them with lead belcher. Um, all of these rivets, I will eventually come back and get with, um, we call it the uh, Stormhost Silver or Runefang Steel. Um, so no need to really do them in any other color right now. But um, so yeah, the tops tops and bottoms of this, uh, this portion on obviously both sides. Okay, those are those two pieces done. All right, chainsaw time. Uh, the teeth, very easy. So go and do the teeth. I like to do the teeth first because then I can do this and get in between and not care about hitting anything else because... Um, well, because I'm going to go back and paint it later. So no need to get overly uh, messy, but you know, you don't need to be. So the lead battery is now completed. So what we are going to do is move on to Celestia Gray. Celestia Gray is going to be the base coat for the Ulthawan Gray and will be put on uh, in multiple, multiple light coats. Um, just on the shoulder pad here, right? Putting it on there, la la. And then um, I'm gonna do the van brace as well because I, I liked how that turned out on the assault intercessor. So this one here is gonna get some white on it. The entirety of the chainsword um, case here, all the way back to the cross guard here. Obviously, the other sides too. For the bike, um, I think I decided that I want to do the fuel tank, or what I'm considering the fuel tank here, um, in white. So that's going to be Celestia Gray. Go ahead and give that a nice couple of coats. As well as, um, I'm, I'm, God, I'm, I'm torn. You know, I kind of want to do this back piece as well, but I think I'm going to leave it blue because I don't want a whole lot of white. And when you're talking about a whole lot of white, you're talking about something like this entire uh, side piece because this is where the main... Um, symbols are going to go as far as the uh like the the fulminators uh, icon and whatnot so chapter symbol so that uh i'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and then again 
all the way up to here. I'm going to try to draw a nice clean line across the top there and then underneath uh, this silver here. So we're going to go and do those parts in Celeste Gray, make them nice and clean, multiple thin coats, uh, and then uh, we'll have to layer on with some old one after. All right, so I have finished the Celestra Gray on all the parts. Uh, one additional one that I didn't think about was actually this uh, this bridge that goes across the uh, the front of the bike. So because when you put the, the pieces on, they match up against it. So you want to make sure you uh, you paint that as well. So uh, I already painted the Oath One Gray uh, here and there on the um, the tank and on that that one side piece just to start it off. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple strokes here just to show you uh, how it goes on the... Oh, where'd my water go? I lost my water! I lost my water! And then I bumped the camera. Oh, everything is going to heck. Anyways, um, so a little bit of water. And I put it over here. All right, so um, for these portions here, the uh, chain sword, just go right over the top of your Celestial Gray. And... Very simple, a lot of DDD. Um, for the larger panels, uh, it takes a while because you want to make sure you have nice thin coats of paint um, for these types of panels. And it just, you know, you're not going to get it in the first coverage. I think the other the other panel that I already finished took maybe um, three coats or so. And the reason is, you know, you have to let it fully dry or else you pull the paint away. You have to make sure you get a nice uh, coverage as well. And if you try to go too thick all at once, then you're just gonna get, um, what'll happen or what seems to happen is you go, and I, I didn't get rid of the camera, I just had to move it. And then I forgot to set it up again. But <clears throat> what you'll get is you'll get really thick, good coverage of white in one spot and really thin coverage in another spot. And then you'll end up having to try and fill in that part that you missed and it'll take a really long time and then you may have uneven painting surfaces anyway, so it'll look, uh, you know, it'll look kind of, it'll just literally, it'll look messy instead of nice and smooth, laying down smooth. Now, if you have an airbrush, by all means use an airbrush, but while I have one, um, I don't feel like setting it up. So, um, just keep doing this, unless you're painting orcs, then it can look however it wants, um, because I'm pretty sure orcs can be pretty messy, right? Um, but if you're trying to make it look neat and orderly, um, well then you just kind of have to take your time. Now, something else I, I kind of do is I, if it's a piece like this, or you notice there's nothing, nothing behind it, nothing to, to get paint onto and, uh, and mess up. I will sometimes just like, as if I'm dry brushing it, flick my, my brush back and forth. Cause if you're barely scratching the surface of it, you can get a decent, uh, decent coverage without getting, um, too many lines or anything like that. Now I do this, which spreads the paint out nice and thin, and I'm still going to go back. You can see, maybe you can, you could kind of see there's still lines showing up in the paint. Um, so I'm still going to go back and do another coat, but anyways, so do that on, uh, those couple of pieces. And then of course the shoulder pads here and the van brace here, and then finish off the chain sword. And then we'll move on to a different color. So the Ulthuan gray is now finished and we are moving on to, uh, Eschen gray. It's another gray and it's at the complete opposite end of the scale because I don't know, they just like naming things like that. All right. So the two spots, um, or rather the, the couple of components, basically it's just going to be the body pieces that are going to get this. And there's some spots on the legs and they're really, really hard to see, but you know me, I like to paint things, uh, that'll never get seen again, which is why <laughs> you'll notice I've painted the inside of the pipes, which are probably never going to be seen. And now I'm going to paint the inside of the joints here, which are, you know what? They're not going to be seen so much. I'm not even going to put it on camera. You know what? I'm going to paint them off camera intentionally. Uh, and while it started off unintentionally, I'm going to do it now intentionally because that's how much they're not going to be seen. So there it is done. Um, there you go. Now, uh, parts that you might see, so I'll try to keep these in focus now is, uh, where are they? Oh, this little tiny pot spot inside there, which I'm going to get a smaller brush to do. But like, you know, he's, he's, uh, his soft joints here where he's, this is going to be attached on the bike at the seat. You may not see it. Um, but at least, 
you know, you know where it is. So there you go. So there's that. Now parts you may actually see. That's why they're they're uh, last ones here are going to be things like on the hand, um, the insides of the gloves right here. The, they get a little bit, as well as um, actually not on this arm at all, but um, well, again on the inside of the hand here. But then like just inside this elbow joint right here, and sometimes you got a little bit where the arm uh, comes into contact there. So. Uh, if you want, again, this is kind of like the back of the leg, but, uh, you can go ahead and give this, um, a once over and, uh, make yourself feel good about having fully completed, fully completed it. However, again, not something you're likely to see. So I'm going to go finish those up and then those, those will eventually get, uh, a coat of Nolan oil, which I'm not going into that rant again. Uh, but they'll get some Nolan oil. Oh yeah, dirt. Let's do this, uh, the other part of the arm that is not, the reason that there's no points over here on this arm is because they're actually um, attached to the body still. So there you go. So there's those parts. All right, do that ash and gray. Then we'll do some of my bad and black. And then a little bit of screamer pink. Well, then we'll wash. Ash and gray is now completed. And what we're gonna move on to is painting things like the tires and the gun cases in black, Abaddon black to be specific, but you know, any black you wanna use is fine. Uh, these do not need a wash, which is nice, but they, uh, they do need their thin coats. So we're gonna paint these, paint these up, um, let them dry, make sure there's no blue showing through. And uh, just be careful when you're coming up against the, uh, the lead belcher. While we haven't uh, applied any Nolan oil, known oil to it yet uh we do need to make sure that we're not uh, just getting crazy so let's be careful around that and then when you move further out well then you can just go down like this Wee! um don't actually do that because you might splash over onto something else now i think um let's see it's just those two parts and then actually the petals i already painted in in black uh and this little this little nub here is actually going to be silver like that Oop. and then so i get to paint that black again but anyways i don't think there's actually any other black on the rest of this model um most of it is uh blue gray or white so paint the wheels and paint the pedals and i will then oh i will then pretend like i was paying attention to my own model um and paint the handlebar which i was planning on painting um so I'm going to paint this entire, like, uh, I don't know what you call this. I'm going to paint this entire thing black. And then these, like, uh, like throttle button, controller, medialis, majugals, whatever you want to call them. These are going to be black. This is going to be black. You're not going to see most of it, but um, I'm going to avoid the screen for now because I'll probably paint the screen um, either... Either I'll leave it blue and then, you know, or I'll paint it a different blue, or maybe what I'll do is I'll actually paint it like a, like a, a green color, uh, similar to what gets on most of the, like on some of the models' arms, they have a little green pad. So, so that, that, and that. So there you go. So finish those, uh, finish those up in black and then <clears throat> the tires and all that fun stuff. And then... Then we'll move on. Next up is the Screamer Pink, which is, a hand, uh, which is applied to the handlebars. And after this step, I will be able to go through and clean up all of the edges where I overpainted, as well as um, then apply Nuln Oil to all of the uh, base coats we just added. So the obviously we still have things like these tailpipes. The, uh, these seats under here are gonna be uh, painted uh, brown. I'm going to use brown for leather, and then there's some details on the face, as well as the gold trim, you know, which are all in different shades. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to get all of the base coats for known oil done first, and then move on, uh, and hopefully not have to, you know, do too much uh, cleanup afterwards. So handlebars, including whatever you can see that's under his hand here, as well as the weapon grip uh, for this, which again is kind of just really this this end portion right here. If you want to go up uh, in there, you can. Realistically, I would say just get this very outer edge here 
because when he holds it, that's kind of all you'll see. You know, you could pick the model up and go, oh, look, he painted underneath it. But, you know, I don't know if anyone here really does that besides me. So, all right, paint those. I will then put Nolan oil on, and I'm not going to film that step. And so we will return, and we're going to start with uh, items that then get shaded in Agrax or shade. I finished up the known oil and then I went ahead and did a little bit of Caliban green on the screen overall and then what I'll do is I'll, probably, I'll come back in here with the Weight Watcher green and then maybe some Moot green and possibly some uh what do you call that flash gets yellow or maybe even some uh maybe some white smith some some other color to make the etchings on the screen just to make it stand out a little bit but it's a minor detail it just adds a little bit of uh of fun so what we're going to do now is you'll notice I did um I already painted the arm uh, the piece on the fan brace, the pommel on the sword, as well as the shoulder pad uh, in Retributor armor. And I also did the Aquila on the chest here. The gold goes on these couple of places, as well as, of course, the other shoulder pad, which is right here. And um, you can almost play this as just a really, really fat edge highlight. Get your paint on the brush and just turn it side, turn your brush, that is, um, at a right angle to what you're painting and just drag it along. And you make... Nice clean line up and down um, the way. So you can also come in here if you'd like, since we haven't done, um, I'm going to come back in with Nolan oil. So this one already has had a little bit of Nolan oil, but I'm going to go back and clean that up. But since I haven't done that yet on this guy, you can actually be as messy as you want. Not really that much. Uh, don't go too messy simply because why would you intentionally um, screw it up? But uh just go in here, lay a nice clean line down, and then come back with McCrag Blue and clean up that shoulder pad, and then use Nuln Oil to, to finish that off. Um, so we'll do this. Uh, this line here, once we finish it that, I'm going to switch over to Reichlin Flush Shade, because I planned, since I had already painted the other things, I was just going to show you that step right now, too, because this is the only piece that gets... Whoop, knocked over by its other brother uh it's the only piece that actually gets uh the Reichland flush shade so you know nice base coat in here and then just drop this in and uh and darken it down like that um we'll come back and of course clean this back up later but for now just make sure you get a good amount of shade to point out all these nice little details that they work so hard in sculpting so uh, let me finish up the other shoulder pad, get all of it done in Reichland, and then we will move on to stuff that is an Agrax Earth Shade Wash. So the Retributor Armor and the Reichland Flush Shade is now done and drying on other pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of Mornfang Brown over here on these uh, leather portions. So that's going to be all of the little bags he's got hanging off of his belt here, and obviously this, uh, this holster here. And then... Uh, I'm actually going to do, even though you may not see it well, uh, once the model is assembled, I'm going to do the seat in Mornframe Brown because I thought that'd be kind of fun, seeing as how it's a leather seat and all. So I'm going to paint those pieces and uh, probably come back. I'm going to do all of the Agrax Earthshade at once, so I will come back and do more, uh, more base coats once I am done and these are dry. With the Mornfring Brown now completed, I'm going to move on to doing two steps in this one since the only section that is going to need any Xandri dust for uh, things like the parchment is this tiny, uh, just these couple of pieces. Wow, that's way too much paint. Way, way, way too much paint. Okay, try that again. Uh, there we go. That's more likely. Anyways, uh, is putting a little bit of Xandri dust here uh, on the parchment to uh to go up to the purity seal there so there you go that's the only place that needs andrew dust uh which is why my pot of andrew dust has probably lasted me like it basically dried out before uh i'd even go through maybe a quarter of it so i'm on my new ah! i'm on my next one and uh moving on from there. all right so then we've got uh balthazar gold and balthazar gold is only on one section uh well two parts really it's going to be on just both sides of the bike on this uh, heat shield here. Um, and while it uh, it's only two parts, but it's gonna take probably a good amount of coats and uh, 
maybe a different brush to get in here. But so basically these two these two heat shields on uh, on both the sides of where do the other piece go? There it is. There and there. So paint those guys up, uh, finish out with the Xander dust, and then uh, we will come back. I will I will shade with um, Agrax Rest Shade. I'm, again, I'm not gonna film myself doing it because it's just adding a little bit of shade. I mean, for most part, what am I doing? I'm adding paint to models overall. So uh, what makes the base coats and the layers any special? Mm -hmm. But anyways, so I'm going to do those and then we will shade and um, no, we won't. We won't. See, I stopped myself. So we're actually going to come back and do a little bit of uh, Mephisto and red. And there's a couple spots on the bike. I've already hit a couple of the um, those, whatever they are up front. I was going to make them like headlights, but it's in a really bad spot to be an actual headlight. So I was like, oh, maybe they're a sensor or something like that. But yeah, the seat. Ooh, I, like, I like how the seat came out. And then uh, once I assembled it, you can see about that much of it. Anyways, I'm not going to cough on camera. I'm going to make all kinds of other noises, but I'm not going to cough really loudly on camera. Uh, we're going to come back and do a little bit of the, so the screens now, the warp stone glow. Um, probably uh, color up the buttons with some Mephisto red and do the eyes here uh, in Mephisto. So let me paint these pieces, move on to the red, and at that point, then we can not show you me um, washing with Agrax or shade. So, all right. All right, the Balthazar gold and the Xander dust are now complete. Looking like that, looking pretty good. So now we're gonna finish up the final portions uh, in red. And again, got a couple there just inside. Um, but the main thing that I have for this red is going to be the eyes and the helmets. Um, if you have a helmet for a sergeant, the entire helmet will be red. Um, or if it's got one of those flesh tone heads, then I guess any, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't actually haven't looked at the, uh, the Outrider uh, Sergeant yet. If it's got some sort of like helmet hanging off the side, kind of like uh, some of the other lieutenants had, or, um, you know, if not, if he's just got his, uh, if he's got any gear on his uh, head in general, then, um, then you can paint that red if you want. So just to make him stand out a little bit, a uh, little bit from the the normal outriders. So um, I'm gonna go in here and clean these lines up. Go back and paint a little bit of blue if I gotta, just in case I uh, ended up hitting any portions where I didn't want to. And that way the Agrax Earth shade will sit in there really nicely, and I don't have to do any cleaning up. I'm also going to use this red, um, which is Mephisto red. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, just to do. I guess like this, this red button, this will be the classic, you know, uh, don't touch that button from a movie kind of a deal. I think it was what men in black, maybe, I don't know. And maybe, maybe a red button over here too. Don't touch that button or that button. I'm not going to bother going around the sides because it's such a small detail and the red stands out enough. I'll come back. Um, I don't know. What do you think? White, blue, green, yellow. Let's go with yellow. So I'll grab a little bit of flash gets yellow. Um, I'll do that other button that's in here that no one, uh, may ever see. You know, seems like, seems like a, a good color. And hey, why don't we, um, you know what? I'm going to make those, I don't know. That was the fun part about things you can't see that well is, um, they can be whatever color you want them to be. I'm going to make them, I'm going to make them green. So there you go. Make a stop and a go button. Make it really simple. Whoop, two go buttons. Like that, although the screen being green, maybe uh, maybe I shouldn't have made these buttons down here green. But uh, maybe I'll darken those down, and then there'll be a slightly uh, different shade. I don't have any silver. Well, I got Stormhost silver type of, so I'll make those arrows up here silver. There you go, just to add a little bit of color, a little bit of detail. I'm not gonna do that box up there. Um, something you may have noticed um, in general as I'm painting this model is, you know, like, let's see if we can find some right here. Yep, right there, right on the wheel. You got a little bit of 
the paint. Oh, come on, focus for me, please. Got a little bit of paint um, on the tire that's getting rubbed off. Um, same thing happens back here. Oh, there's good. I should have started with that. This happens because I'm handling it and I'm not using gloves and I'm probably being too rough. If you're painting the model um, and you're able to hold the base the whole time, or if you've got it set up on some sort of like, a, like if you have the whole entire model already assembled and it's on uh, some sort of stand, you're not gonna get that same kind of issue, but because I'm uh, also taking it apart and assembling it, like uh, this is like the 20th time I feel like, um, you're gonna see that happening. If you're doing, even if you had all these parts and you're painting them as sub-assemblies, you would have them on, you know, little stands, or you would you wouldn't be handling them and pushing together, pushing them together and taking them apart as often as I am. So, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of extra cleanup work later. Um, in fact, on <laughs> the shoulder right here, I just noticed. Um, I tried to clean it up a little bit, but let's see if I can get it to pop loose. No, maybe it's good. The the metal of the um, the Retributor armor actually completely flaked off to the side, but it was still hanging on. It was like a real rubbery feel. So anyways, what I'm going to be able to do now is go through and hit all of the areas I just did now with um, Agrax Earthshade, and that will be all of the base coats and uh, shades for said base coats complete. So after this step, it's all about edging. All right. All right, so all of the shading is done and we now have a lovely looking Outrider uh, who is in desperate need of some edge highlighting and some fixes on the wheels. This is just, this, this blue is just, what is it? Anyways, uh, I'm gonna be trying to handle the model less now that we're getting closer to the end of it and I'll um, hopefully not chip off as much paint as I've been doing. So we're gonna start with Calgar Blue. Now, something I wanna show you um, because I like to, like to, be like, hey, check out my model. It's the whole point of a painting show is to be able to show off models you've done, even if only six or seven people see them. But check this out, six or seven people. This is my um, veteran assault inter... No, not veteran. I said the last time, too. Last time being the time I recorded this before, but then I had to start over. Moving along. Uh, anyways, so this is my assault intercessor sergeant uh, who has the fun little decorative chess piece, uh, whatever that's called. I don't know what it's called, but you may know. Um, my last intercessors I actually did with a, my last intercessors I did with a skull and uh, ultramarines horseshoe or whatever it's called uh, around the, uh, around the knee pad. But then people were like, weren't that, isn't there, aren't those fulminators? And I was like, you know what? They are fulminators. So why do I have this on here? Well, basically it was because it was the decal I had. So I switched over to just a couple lines of red, so why not? Um, and then I dropped my pointer. Anyways, so what I wanted to show, all that rambling, what does it lead to? Here's what I wanted to say. I wanted to say all this, this whole model took a very long time to edge highlight. Um, and, you know, it's, I think it, it came up, well, if I showed you it, you might be able to see it. I believe in my, uh, you know, I think it came out pretty good. Um, Sure, there's, there's some that could be improved upon, but overall, I'm happy with it. Now, what you may notice about this Outrider model is that there's a Space Marine right here who has a backpack and he's got a chainsword and his pistol is uh, holstered, but overall, there's a Space Marine right here. So that means it's going to take as long to highlight all of him as it took, you know, roughly to that one. But there's a whole bike here. Now, luckily, a lot of this is just long, straight lines, which I'm extremely, extremely bad at, but, you know... Overall, um, just be uh, be ready for, um, well, luckily you won't have to sit here and watch me highlight the whole thing. You just have to listen to me get to the highlighting portion. But if you are painting one of these, it may take you some time to go through the highlighting stage. But uh, it's definitely worth it. It makes the uh, all the, everything just kind of jump out. So I'm also, I don't know if you can see all of these little parts that I was talking about where I'm scratching paint off of it because I'm ha handling it. I'm going to try to ha try and handle it less. So uh, now that we're highlighting it, because that just, you know, pulls off extra stuff. So, uh, that being said, let's go ahead and actually start the painting portion of my painting show. Um, and that is with Calgar blue and I'm probably bumping them in, bumping them on. Uh, what do you call that? We call this thing a camera. So Calgar blue edge highlighted across all of the, um, crag blue portions, trying to just keep a very, very fine line. Um, funny enough, this, this, uh, this is actually my sister, and her uh, her daughter's 
got me this set of, of uh, uh, what do you call these, paintbrushes, and they're totally, totally synthetic, but it may, it's such a fine, stiff bristle that actually it's starting to become my main, uh, my main use for highlighting because it doesn't need to hold a whole lot. That's where the, uh, the natural hair like, uh, brushes come in. I think with the natural hair, you get a better load. So if you're painting more, you don't lose your paint as quick, but with, when you're edge highlighting, I mean, I just literally need the very, a very minuscule amount. I put it on the edge I'm going for, and I, I go and reload my brush and refine the point and all that. So all that said, take what you did right here and uh, do it on the rest of the model. And then when you're done, uh, come back and show me how you did and I'll show you how I did after the break. So there we go. Um, all the parts, including obviously the uh, Space Marine, Primaris Space Marine riding the, uh, uh, the bike, you know, his legs, everything. All that is now done. And what you don't know uh, doesn't hurt you. That was uh, three and a half to four hours of uh, just solid, just sitting here, no breaks, just going through. So, but that's fine because you know I like the uh, I like the look. Now you may also note that the uh, I have not taken the outer casing apart, and that is because uh, it is now glued on. Uh, at this point, I want to try and do as little to take it apart as possible um, because the more you do it, the more you know. I actually I don't know if you can see it over here. All right, good, you can't, but I know where it is, right there. <laughs> uh, I rubbed paint off of there and I had to repaint the whole thing. In fact, I can still see it and it bothers me. And since you're stuck here watching me, I'm gonna go ahead and try to just continue to add a little bit more. Like I said, super light coats. Anyways, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this side and I am going to do uh, all the highlights on the metal pieces. So that's gonna be edge highlighting on all of the engine components, uh, the chain sword, the tires, the, the guns up front here, basically anything you painted in lead belcher, including, uh, the metal, it's a fun noise, uh, including the, the metal pipes here. And what I would do for these, since there's no hard edge, um, to these, I would just kind of like maybe look to highlight the, um, the parts that come around here at the very tops. So you're, you're giving don't go all the way into the crease, but like there's, you can almost see a light that the, or a, um, a brighter portion of the tube that the light reflecting off of it creates. And you're just going to look to accent that. So, or at least I'm going to look to accent that, you know, you may be way better at painting than I am. So you might just be watching this and going, man, why doesn't he do this? But anyways, so I'm going to do something along those lines, just giving, you know, instead of, like I said, instead of a hard edge, um, like you would give on the back of the handle there, just giving it a, a soft, you know, thin down version of water, just like this of water, apparently not even using paint now. Yeah. It's one o'clock in the morning. I'm going to go to bed after this. So it's my, my commentary has devolved even beyond its normal means. So what that means is I'm going to finish up these uh, highlights using, by the way, Runefang Steel or Stormhost Silver. That's the, Runefang Steel again, I think was the, the paint that they used to have and then Stormhost Silver replaced it. But it's basically, to me, it's the same bright silver. So use some sort of bright silver metallic. Um, I think, uh, what's the other one? Iron Breaker is the middle, like Lead Belcher is the base, Lion Breaker is the mid and Runefang or Stormhost are the highs. Use something that makes the, the metal shine. If you're good with non-metallic metals, uh, do that. I, at some point in the future, might try uh, a video on that, but first I would have to learn how to do it. So, in the meantime, I'm going to paint these tomorrow because I'm really tired. But I'm going to paint these and uh, then we will highlight after that the uh, leather on the seats specifically. But then, because that, what that allows me to do is it allows me to actually put this guy on here, uh, glue him in place glue the arms in place, glue everything in place. And then now I'm just highlighting, um, the very highest portions that I can see. So hopefully at that point I'll stop rubbing paint back off. Um, side note, cause that's what all my videos are. I think the next model I put together, um, I'm going to look to actually just film as it actually is like showing you all the separate pieces because putting it together and taking it apart takes a lot of time. 
Um, I like I, I put it on the turntable, which I like, because I hadn't seen that in videos, but I think what I'll do is I'll just put the individual pieces on the turntable, uh, and then as it slowly gets glued together, um, it will uh, take shape. Uh, just because the more the more you handle the parts, the more um, the more I run across the fact that I'm I'm messing up the parts. So also notice that my main camera down there hasn't had much action in a little while. So it, uh, look, there's a the guy's hand. Like I said, it's late. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to bed. Well, I'll be back. Don't you worry. In like ten seconds, if if even that long. With the ring fang steel done, uh, the next step is to put a fan by the out uh, the exterior door of your garage to try and cool it down so that you don't sweat uh, an insane amount uh, while you paint. So that's if you're hearing any uh, buzzing in the background, that is the uh, is not my chainsaw brought to life. It is simply the fan. Hopefully, uh, it's not too distracting. Uh, no more so than my normal uh, ramblings. So. Next, we're gonna do uh, the white scar highlights on all of the edges of the white portions of the bike. Um, the bike portion, I already did the, uh, the inside on the, um, the gas tank, but you'll wanna run a couple of lines here um, just to make a nice uh, clean line signifying the two separate panels. And then, um, of course, if you mess up, and you need to clean anything up, use your Ultha One Gray and uh, just run a clean line next to it. The chain sword, I'm not gonna go into much detail because I just did that and it ended up being like five minutes long uh, and wasn't really helpful. So, um, you know, meanwhile, we're 45 minutes into this video and I don't even know if it is helpful, but I like to think that uh, at least somebody's getting something out of it, even if it's nothing more than uh, something to listen to. So, there are two edges here that I don't know if you can see, but there's one here. You know what? I'm going to make you see it because now it's, now it's going to be coming a thing. Let me see if I can use a little bit of blue and then I'll come back and clean it all up. So bear with me here. All right. There is one line here, right there. Oh, that is, that's like painting with watercolors. I'll try that again. Let's use a different color that isn't super watered down right now. So there's one line here. You see that one? Right? And there's actually a second line here. Uh, oh, I should have thought about using extremely contrasting colors instead of highlighting colors this whole time. So there are the two the two lines that I've try been trying to explain uh, prior. Now that, that that is there and it's also on this side of the sword. So there's a total of four edges on the top of the sword because it's kind of does like a, a circle over the top. So feel free to highlight both of those or feel free to just do, you know, the bottom ones and leave the tops or, you know, whatever. Uh, it's up to you. I like doing, I like at least trying to hit all of the, uh, all four of them, but, whoa! <laughs> uh, everybody okay? Uh, that's one, uh, if anybody, if anyone knows, there we go. Roughly lined back up. <sighs> I hope my wife is watching because I have no spatial awareness in uh, in real life. I knocked multiple holes in the walls while moving furniture around. And uh, I run into things constantly, so that was an elbow to the camera. Anyways. So if she's not watching, nobody tell her. Um, but if she is watching, well then, hi, I did it again. But this time nothing broke, so... Anyways, I'm going to go highlight stuff, and uh, you know what, I bet you my spatial awareness issues is also why I just was painting things way up here and not down here. Regardless, irregardless, irrigationless. It was really warm today. Now that I've had time to complete the white scar uh, edge highlighting, as well as drink a full glass of water and get rid of the probably delusions and uh, dehydration I was suffering, it is time to use a little bit of scrag brown on the leather pieces. Uh, so I've taken the Space Marine back off of the seat here to uh, just edge highlight all of these uh, brown portions of what I'm considering to be leather, just to make it, you know, give it a little bit of detail. And like I said, once you assemble this, I don't know if you'll see any of it, but uh, the stuff you will see, it'll look amazing. Uh, 
or at least I'd like to think it will, um, and I'm going to say it will, even if it doesn't. So, uh, but more importantly than these pieces here, which I may have done already, I don't even know, but I don't think I did. So I'm doing them again. If I'm not, haven't done them. More importantly, let's move that to the side and look at the actual pieces we need to worry about. And that is the uh, holsters and pouches and whatnot on his, uh, on the, the Space Marine itself. That is the only other part on this that has some of the brown that needs uh, highlighting. Once I am done with this highlight, I'm just going to sneak in here and on the buttons, I will do, um, I like to use a little bit of uh, Retributor armor as like a, a gold snap rather than uh, a silver one. I don't know why, but I like to. So uh, I just like to tap it a little bit, just like that. And let's see if I can, what if I hold it with this hand? Anyways, so there you go. A little bit of highlighting, a little bit of gold button. So uh, I'm gonna do all of the brown and uh, then we will just have a few more highlights, probably uh, one more large stage, uh, which is the hash nut, I think it's hash nut copper I'm gonna use on this, uh, as well as a little bit of Eschen gray on the tires and then uh, the, the weapon uh, casings. And after that, it'll be a little bit of uh, fine highlights on just portions of the model that just have very minimal um, needs. So let's get the brown all uh, brown done and move on. All right, Morphine Brown is done. And like I said, the little parts on the seats that you can see look amazing, uh, but the rest, you basically, yeah, you can't see anything, so. But uh, it's done and it looks good and I am going to stick to my opinion. So there you go. Now I'm gonna be putting them, uh, some Eschen Gray uh, onto the black portion portions. Uh, there are the uh, gun casings up here. And what I'm gonna be doing for those is just a standard edge highlighting, but what I'm gonna be doing for the wheels is just a lot of dry brushing just to try and get any of these lines in here um, showing up just ever so slightly i don't want a heavy dry brush because i don't want the entire wheel to be gray but i'm okay with you know a little bit of a mix of black and uh black and ash and gray in here so i'm gonna go through and edge highlight edge highlight the gun casings and uh dry brush the wheels once that's done, it's kind of a twofer step because what I'm going to do once these wheels are uh, are painted, I am going to put my uh, Armageddon dust onto the base, and we'll be then um, putting on my text. That's a texture paint, so I'm texture painting the base, and that way I will be able to glue this down into place and let it start uh, start drying, and then also then on. I officially, I think the whole model at this point is glued together, but at that point I will officially never, whoop, don't you push that off the glue, or not glue, uh, tack, sticky tack or whatever you call that stuff. But um, at that point I won't have to pull the, um, the model back off of the base. And so the chances of me screwing the paint up um, once again are limited to just, um, you know, it's no longer just me handling it in, in separate pieces. Now it's it's more of, you know, am I, am I clumsy and do I knock into things and stuff like that. So chances are good that I will knock it off and have to repaint stuff. But um, at least I won't be because I'm just holding it, you know. So let me finish up dry brushing. Just let me do it. I'm going to do it. And uh, once that's complete, like I said, you'll come back. You'll see that the uh, Armageddon Dunes. Let's see, it's probably a good amount of dry brushing for the wheel. Uh, Armageddon Dunes are, will be then completed as well. Mm, and gosh only only the what is it a couple metallics and uh some red let me show you because i feel like it so i did the screen i'm gonna have to put this down so you can see it so the, i kind of the screen uh on is the warp stone glow and on top of the warp stone glow i did moot green around the outsides for a highlight and then i went back and got the thinnest wisp of moot green on my brush and just dragged it across and made two columns of lines and then went back in again and the parts that you can actually see um you can see the moot green in person but the parts that you can see on camera real are actually uh flash gets yellow and i just highlighted a couple of the lines that i had already made with the moot green so i think it turned out pretty good i also did uh, i'm going to be doing this the the handle the uh i did the hand basically i did this whole piece because i didn't want to touch it again so 
That all got highlighted. You can see the edge highlights of the um, Eschen gray on the black there. They look nice and crisp. That's how it's gonna look everywhere. And then, uh, yeah. So it's coming together. We're almost done. Uh, some decals and then I'll be able to uh, show it all off. So the Eschen gray is now complete. Uh, here, here, and of course on the wheels. And then the Armageddon dust slash Armageddon dunes. I got both of them. I just kind of mix them together and make little lumps everywhere. Is also uh, now drying, as is a um, coat of primer around the bottom, which is just a Vallejo black primer. I'll probably have to go back and touch that up later. So for the time being, um, what I'm going to do is hopefully pop this thing on here without too much trouble. Um, would be great if it was magnetic, but it's not. So uh, now we are going to take a little bit of uh, Liberator Gold and we are going to edge highlight all of the gold. So that is going to be things like here on the van brace for the skull. Um, and then if you would like to just hit a little bit of the outsides, you don't have to go crazy trying to get the entire thing. Uh, I will come back. If you see in here, uh, some of the Reglan flesh shade has settled into the very middle. So I'll come back and try to pop a, like redefine that. So it's a more of a, a noticeable cross than uh, with the Ultharone Gray. Also, we're going to uh, edge highlight down the edges, go figure, of the pauldrons. So we get a nice, nice shiny uh, line here. And then, oh, and if you have too much paint, you actually paint onto the Ultharone Gray. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up later. If you have um, uh, the right amount of paint though, just, which is just barely anything. Don't have it too wet. Um, you can use the complete side of your brush and almost as if you were dry brushing, just drag it slowly. Try not to hit the Reichland flesh shade that's in the recesses. Just try to do the very, um, the raised portions on the Aquila so that it shines nicely. Hit, of course, the skull and then go and do all of that back again uh, on the other side. The other uh, metallic we are going to highlight in this step so that I can make it uh, so I can shorten this video up a little bit because it's whenever I it's funny I, I like to go long-winded at the start and then when it gets into the details I like to go oh and just do it and then move on oh don't forget uh, we also got this gold so any of the gold you see you're gonna want to hit with that uh, liberated gold now I think this this co this color is hash nut copper and I am right so it is hash nut copper and what that we're going to do with this is we are going to um, hit all of the, like do an edge highlight on the uh, heat shields here. And um, it doesn't need to be super clean. It already, you can tell though, the Balthazar gold already shines quite brightly, but we're going to make it shine more. So hit all the rivets, um, of course, because since they are raised, make them pop out that much more. If you want, you can go back in with some more Agrax Earthshade and darken down just the outer edges again of the rivets to make them shine that much more. But, you know, just come in here and give it a little bit of a line and a little bit of a line. And if you don't see it showing up, it probably still is. Um, like, sorry, not on camera, literally like in person, you don't necessarily see it. And then you'll hit a certain angle and it'll be like, whoa, that's super shiny. And you don't want it to be too shiny because it's supposed to be dirty and nasty, even though I typically don't, uh, I don't really, you know, I saw, one of these guys on uh, on Reddit and they had done an absolutely amazing job on an Outrider. And I mean, the whole thing was, there was like pieces, extra pieces strapped on as if they had reinforced their armor with um, pieces of, they just met metal they found around the thing. There was chains all over the place. Uh, the entire bike was just filthy dirty. It looked like it had been through, uh, through heck and back. So uh, I don't do that. I like to make it look like they just drove off the, uh, the showroom floor and they're like hey check out my new stuff and then you know as soon as they get into a fight it all goes to heck but that's two, two hex in, in one day um anyways point is i like to make mine look nice and shiny because i like to look at my models and i uh, i think more of what it is because i like to look at other people who do really good weathering uh i think it's that i'm just afraid to paint the you know all the time that i i took to make this look nice and then just go all right now throw mud at it so but I'm also, I'm happy with how they look, uh, even though they look, you know, almost like a toy when you're done because it's too clean. Uh, it just, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a look that I enjoy. And trust me, um, there's a million ways to, to make it work. So, 
Liberator Gold on the gold pieces, Hashnet Copper on the copper pieces, and then we will hopefully, hopefully we're almost done. I think we are. I think we only got a couple more uh, random highlights like the eyes and... Uh, do we have anything other than the eyes? I'm not going to wait for you to answer because that would just cause all kinds of problems. But I think basically we got the red of the eyes to do and... Uh, Gosh, that might be it. Anyways, cool. Well, then we're that much closer to being done. All right, I'm gonna go do that and uh, hopefully finish up. I got kind of bored while I was waiting for the uh, video to fully process and upload. So I went ahead and did a couple steps and that is the Agrax Earthshade over the base uh, texture paint. And then I went ahead and did the Pink Screamer, or not Pink Screamer, Pink Horror uh, on the, the, what do you call it here? The wax of the Purity Seal as well as a shabby bone uh, to layer over the Xandra Dust and Agrax Earthshade of the parchment. And then finally throwing a little bit of Screamer Pink, <laughs> Screamer Pink, no, uh, Screaming Skull, a lot of screams, uh, Screaming Skull on that. I also went ahead and for the eyes, where did my pencil go? It's not a pencil, it's a paintbrush. For the eyes, uh, I did a layer of Evil Sun Scarlets uh, inside there to do layer just to brighten up the eye outside of the, um, the wash. And then topped it off with a very, very uh, slight dot of flash gets yellow in the center. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, then why are you even here? What are you doing? Shouldn't you be wrapping it up? And I'm like, well, yeah, probably. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to find uh, Rhinox. No, Rhinox hide? Let me find a brown. I'm going to find a brown for you. And I didn't plan. Dryad bark. Perfect. Dryad bark. You know, it's not mixed at all, but I'm going to use just a little bit of it. And what we're going to do is we are going to, instead of using my uh, my pen that I normally uh, cheat, not cheat, but just, you know, am lazy and use for the parchment, uh, the writing on the parchment, I'm going to show you kind of the same thing I did for the screen. I'm going to show you that on the parchment itself. So you're going to want to get, let's see, I'll put this over here, maybe you can see it, my little wet palette. Um, basically, I, I like, you know, you roll the brush, roll the brush. Wow, where is that br bristle coming from? Oh, maybe I shouldn't show you this. Maybe it's just doomed to fail. Anyways, so now you can see how thin of lines I can create. So we're going to come over here and just give it the softest little, little draw sideways. And just try and give little... I see that's even still too much paint. So we're going to dry it off a little bit more. Make sure we have a nice fine tip. And just try and draw across the parchment paper without much paint actually coming off. And it's so much so that it's not working right now. Maybe I won't show you this step. And who am I kidding? I'm gonna leave all of this in as a testament to me being stubborn. Actually, you can kind of see it is sort of writing. Uh, it's not very dark yet though, that's the problem. Um, and that's probably because the dry and bark was not mixed. Um, I like to use a brown instead of a black, even though my pen is black because if I'm going to take the effort to draw these lines, I don't, wow, my arm is twitching. Uh, I don't want them to be, you know, uh, super dark. It needs to, it needs to look as if it was writing. So just, you know, tap it here, there. You don't need to do a full line every time. You could just give it, you know, one or two taps, kind of make it look like it might be separate words. And then from far enough away, it's going to look fine. So, uh, continue to do this, uh, wrong and you know but there you go you know not kind of happy with it but from way over way over here i guess that's fine plus the rest of them all kind of makes up for it i am happy with the rest so i'm going to throw some decals on this guy and uh that will be uh, another model complete so finish up the final steps and I'll show you what it looks like And so we come to the end of another episode of Rosham Joe Paints. Overall, this model was a lot of fun. Um, I didn't like the uh, the rubbing of the paint off, so like I said, I'm gonna probably make some adjustments on that one uh, next time. But uh, the whole idea between ripping the Band-Aid off and just cutting the the um, the 
exhaust pipes off of the uh, armor casing of uh, the front of the bike made made the build a lot easier. It also kind of, for a little while, made the, uh, <laughs> made the bike look like a Tron kind of, not Tron, but uh, almost Acura vibes. Anyways, uh, had a lot of fun painting this model. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, watching me struggle my way through it. But, uh, you know, and if you made it this far, I, I appreciate that you watch. Go ahead and give me a comment, like, subscribe, bell, ringy, majingy. And, uh, you know, if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know. Uh, I'm going to continue painting the Indominus box for now. And then uh, we'll move on to the other models that I have on hand. And if anything uh, sounds interesting, go ahead and, like I said, uh, give me a suggestion. Maybe I'll try it out. Uh, for now, that's all I got. See you in the next one. Also, it's way too hot to be wearing a hat and a sweatshirt, so I do it for you.